So do you remember the first time we met was the PGA show in 2019? And I remember um, when you agreed that you would do like a little interview with me at the time. I was so starstruck because you were maybe the most famous person I talked to at the time. So (laughs) the thing people don't realize about you is you have a really interesting history in golf. So after college, you went over to St. Andrews with a buddy of yours, right? And just caddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, a friend of mine actually did a, a an extensive uh, recap about our 2006 summer. 2006 sounds really a long time ago. Um, about going over there in Caddy, and yeah, we just basically went over and didn't know if we were going to get jobs or not, and our jobs ended up being at the old course. So that was kind of my first uh, step into into golf was you know caddying for these people that are getting a once in a lifetime experience around St Andrews and uh they had this bumbling american idiot helping them out. So Shane, you're from Texas and you went to the University of Arizona. You live in Arizona now. What what brought you to Arizona? How would you get there? So I was going to try to play collegiate golf and I had an injury my senior year of high school. I I actually had some pretty good, you know, finishes in some AJGA tournaments which is kind of how the only real step into into the collegiate side of the golf thing. So uh, when I got the injury, I was a little frustrated and decided to just go somewhere I didn't know anybody. And uh, that was Arizona. I went to Tucson, Arizona, knew zero people. It's kind of funny that you ended up staying in Arizona because you always make fun of me for being in Florida, whereas I think Florida is a lawless swamp, but Arizona's <laughs> a lawless desert. So like, no I, no I, crocodiles, I, no alligators, <laughs> definitely have a lot of similarities. I, I some snakes I and scorpions. Yeah, well, you you know, you you project the things you don't like about yourself on other people, and so I just go after people from Florida because I know uh, Arizona has many of many of flaws. That brings us to our first break, which is going to be a ninety second Q and A. You and me. I'm going to ask you just quick questions. You have ten seconds to answer each of the nine questions because we're playing a quick nine. I probably should have said that earlier. It's okay. Clock is starting. First question: What is the most important thing to know about Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, man, it's, I know zero things. I, I have zero. Good, I have, right. You don't know anything because you're not a zero, nerd. So you pass the question. Yep, okay, moving on. Who won the 2020 Players Championship? Oh, my goodness. 20, oh, nobody. Incorrect. Aaron Fleener, closest to the pin on 17 for the caddies. <laughs> what is the national sport of Canada? Uh, curling? No, lacrosse. Who won the very first Masters? Oh, man. I got uh, Phil Mickelson. Close. It was Horton Smith. However, we also accept Horton Here's a Who. Uh, do your best Leo DiCaprio Titanic impression. Uh, just, just dead? Is that what I should do? Just, <laughs> just. There we go. That was, that, was, that was almost as bad as the time I asked Paul Casey to do an animal impression. He goes, No. I can do a small. That, that was, was amazing. amazing. But I love that. that was One almost. Of my favorite moments. <laughs> I'm so glad. That means so much to me. It was great. All right. I think we're going to, we're actually on the clock. <laughs> we're on the clock. Slugger just called. He put us on the clock. It was my fault. I took a little Bryce and detour. Um, Slugger Grams, that'd be so good. Like telegrams and Slugger Grams. Okay. This Bev cart stop is taking way too long. It's my fault. Shade, what is the greatest TV show of all time? Uh, the Wire. <sighs> No, it's the you're, office. You're going to say the office. I know you're going to say the office. Yep. Come on. You got to pander to your audience. It's fair enough. Fair enough. Best score you ever shot at St. Andrew's Old Course? Uh, I shot three under one time uh, and I birdied uh, 17, uh, the road hole, which was uh, when I made the putt, I, I was like, well, I should never play this golf course again because I'll never do better than that. Okay, Bryson, we are still on the clock. Long iron or hybrid? Long iron. All right. Um, you must have a very tight sphincter. How many broken bones have you had? Uh, good question. Three. Okay. Okay. Most overrated movie of all time. Oh my goodness. The most overrated movie ever. And I'm on the clock. Um, I'll go the notebook just cause I don't get it. I don't remember if I had an answer in mind for this one. Also, it was only supposed to be nine holes and I put 10 questions. So that, there's Perfect. that. I'm on the metric system. It's fine. You, so you and I are kind of opposites, right? So we have a similar swing. We both get a little long, but you're a righty that plays lefty and I'm a lefty that plays righty. Never played lefty, huh? You never tried it? I think I'm going to try it and maybe try to hustle people, like see if I can break 90 within a few weeks, but it's... 
I don't know, but how, so do you do everything left-handed or just golf? Um, yeah, everything but right. I write right-handed and uh, and I do everything else lefty in terms of sports. So you're, you are really the opposite of me. I'm a right-handed person or I'm a left-handed person that does everything right-handed except play pool, which is the you, weirdest you, thing. You I play like pool lefty. Pool it. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah, well, I, went, I would like, like to go back the to the day. Yeah, the day you went, this is the way I'm doing this. Of all the stuff, I'm going to do it this way. It was the day after moving freshman year of college. I was playing pool with like some new boy I had met at one of the bars. And we, I was like, he's like, wait, why are you doing it with that? Hand? And I'm like, isn't this how everyone does it? And he's like, no. And I was like, I do something can, left handed. Can you show me how to do it? You know, I went on a, I went on a bowling date one time, first date, oh. bowling date. Um, and, uh, it was, uh, it was this girl that I was really excited about going on a date with and she bowled a 206 <laughs> and I was like, Whoa, this, this is the opposite of let, let someone win. I was like every, and it wasn't, <laughs> the move wasn't professional. It wasn't the spin, just right down the middle, 206 kicked my ass. And that was, uh, that was, I don't think we went out again. I think that was our, our one and done moment on, on the, on the, on the 206 bowling date. Yeah, thank God you didn't take her to the driving range. She'd find some new profession in long drive. <laughs> She'd be WLD champion of the year. <laughs> she's probably, I mean, she's probably hustling people out of bowling Always. money. And it actually, so bowling, there's a couple courses, you know, I have, I'm up near Philly and there's like a bowling league of these courses that are also in the Golf Association of Philadelphia. These like old country clubs, they have bowling lanes. Like in the middle of the golf course, like in random like spots. And one of them's at the turn of a golf course. There's these bowling lanes. It's a really cool course in New Jersey. It's called Riverton. And it, they would, you know, bowl against like Aronimic and I think like Huntington Valley. And the fact that they had these bowl country club bowling leagues was like the most incredible thing in my mind. So we're it, that you should have been hanging out at Riverton doing the I bowling. Missed, then you could have pulled her, yeah, on the That's driving range. Bummer. It would have been, that's right. It would have been our decathlon. That's for sure. Bowling and golf back and forth until, uh, <laughs> until the date ends. You joined Fox sports golf in 2015, correct? Right. So tell me about that. I know recently Fox, you know, sold the rights to, to the right. coverage and, and I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. Just tell me about your journey at Fox sports golf. Yeah. So, uh, so Amanda, I, I started on TV at this place called the back nine network. Um, it was a startup network that was, uh, that was hoping to compete with the golf channel and the network, I think lasted about four months. I moved to Connecticut, dragged my girlfriend, now my wife up there to Connecticut. She'd never lived anywhere else. Uh, never driven in snow. She got to experience all the lovely beauties of living in the Northeast. And so, um, when that went under, uh, you know, unexpectedly, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I got a call from, from a guy named Mark Loomis, who I didn't know a whole bunch about. And he was the new producer at Fox Sports, asked me to come along and do some digital coverage. And the first year I did featured whole coverage at Chambers Bay with Robert Dameron. And uh, I, I honestly thought that I was calling the Masters. And, I mean, you know, getting a chance to do basically what I thought was calling the U.S. Open. I mean, I was doing featured holes on a digital platform. But for me, this was as big a big a step up as I'd ever received. So uh, it was amazing, an amazing week. I got to meet a whole bunch of cool people. And I thought this is a really cool gig. And seven months later, I'm in a meeting in Florida with uh, with Joe Buck and Julie Inkster and Greg Norman and all these people. And I all of a sudden I'm on this A team and I'm sitting on a set with Holly Saunders. I'm kind of going, what's going on? And that was kind of the quick step up there and then slowly made my way through. I mean, I did on course reporting. I had interviews a couple of years at the U.S. Open and eventually got to be kind of the the, the co-play by play guy with Joe Buck at the U.S. Opens and then got a chance to to uh, handle a lot of the, the coverage for the other USGA events. So, you know, I mean, I, I'd say I've said it a lot. The coolest five years of my life, coolest five years of my career was getting to do this. And, you know, I mean, it, obviously a bummer for us that we lost it. But I'd say the biggest bummer for me is not getting the summers with Faxon and Loomis and Bime and, and Julie and that crew because we were close and we hung out a lot. And, uh, and it felt like professional camp. You know, you, you were out on the road getting a chance to do all these cool events and getting to do some events that you really had to dig up information on. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't Jordan Spieth and John Rahm and Bryson. I mean, these were players that you'd never heard of for the most part. 
and that you had to find all that information of uh, kind of on the spot. So I thought that was a lot of fun. I love that part of the, the journalistic uh, approach. You do uh, football for Fox also. So we'll be seeing you, well, hopefully this fall, assuming the NFL. If, football, if football's played, yes. I, I, uh, I, I've, done, I've done some NFL. I've done some college basketball. Uh, I mean, I did the Westminster Dog Show. No big deal. Um, I that, that, that was right after we had first met, and I was, was so excited. Oh, it was an unbelievable moment in my life. I met a lot of dogs. I pet a lot of dogs. <laughs> but one thing was I, I didn't know exactly the approach. It felt kind of like service animal-y to me where I didn't want to go up and, and like pet the head of a dog and, and the owner get mad or frustrated or this dog's in the zone. Like, I don't know if dogs get in the zone. So I, I, was, know. I was very, you know, I was... Kind of the dog's getting a slowly. pedicure and you're like, can I get a sound bark from you, please? <laughs> like, Wait, one more. Can you get one more? Fluffy's got to bark one more time before he goes out on it, goes out and competes. You and I both share a love of dogs. Uh, we often exchange pictures of Harlow and, and I, I adore Harlow. I think we're going to get a picture up here. You're, she's just like the cutest dog ever. I mean, you're a nice person. I like you and all, but my favorite thing about you might be Harlow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, French bulldog obsessed. Um, I have a head cover that Seamus made me of Harlow's face all over the putter cover. So now we have the Frenchie and the baby, and we're still waiting at 13 months for them to like become best friends. You know, they they don't neither really care about each other right now. They are just kind of ships passing. So I'm waiting for the moment where either Henry or Harlow's like, you're my dude. But currently, uh, currently not the case. Uh, I, 13 months old, don't really care about anything except walking around and pointing at stuff. It's weird. Yeah, I think once Henry gets to a point where he's able to ride Harlow, they'll have that like avatar moment where they connect to <laughs> each Henry other. Now and it'll be fine. Harlow. They just get a brace for this little French bulldog. Um, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be interesting. They both love, I will say, both my children, including the puppy, uh, are obsessed with balls and golf balls and tennis balls. <laughs> So and I feel like them, if they're sure. ever going to be the synergy, that's going to be it. Is there going to be, you know, Henry throws it, Harlow brings it back, Henry throws it, Harlow brings or, it back. That's or right. you throw it and they might both go fight over who's going to bring it back. That too. Yeah. Fight, fight, fight. Please fight, uh, fight calmly and responsibly is the hope. Yeah. But yes, fight for it if you want. So what has fatherhood been like? How has, has it changed you? Are you like a better person? And I definitely have taken steps through fatherhood to be a little bit better of a person and, and maybe more around, uh, maybe more... Not like I was not at the house, but you want to be the dad that, you know, does half or more of the responsibilities. And uh, and so I think that's been the cool thing is just always being around them, obviously, during what we've gone through the last six, seven months. Shane, thank you so much. All right. That was Out of Bounds. He's Shane Bacon. I'm Amanda Rose. We'll see you next week.